die! Medieval times of Knights of Honor await you. Welcome to Let's Play Knights of Honor with NOH One Bad Terran. I'm your host, One Bad Terran. This is Knights of Honor made back in 2004 by Black Sea Studios. Let's see if I can figure out how to play this game again. It's been quite a long time here. Now this game is set in Europe. A thousand AD, twelve hundred AD, and thirteen fifty AD. These are all the countries that are available to select from. As you can see, it changes as time progresses. With late around thirteen fifty AD having the most, and typically the most warfare. However, it tends to be a very unbalanced. As you can look at the map here and see. Go back to the early years in France, very unified, and a lot more war states over in England, a lot more unification down here. It's a lot more of the uh, big war style, massive countries going to war. So that's what I'm going to be going with here today. I'm going to try out actually what you start with in the tutorial itself, Ulster, uh, situated in the northern part of the island of Ireland. Ulster was historically under heavy English influence in the 5th century. Ireland was converted to Christianity by St. Patrick. Subsequently, it became a center of Christian scholarship. This was brought largely to an end, however, with the invasion of the Vikings in the 10th century, that of the Normans in the 12th century, in 1172, King Henry II of England started to conquer the Irish Islands. And as we know it today, that Ulster is actually part of England. Now, Knights of Honor... Let us restock and rest! ...is one of those games that has a, a pretty your big... At service, sire. They don't really explain how to play the game very well. Let's see if I can remember is this. Political view. Alright, so this is the political view. I want to look at relations here. Now, I'm at war with Lothian, but you can tell by the sword and fire that they are my enemy right now. Uh, the crown represents a prince, and the tiara a princess. Whoop. Okay. okay, so I can do it with arrow keys. Uh, so, I have a prince, and I would like to offer Italy a royal wedding my prince for their princess and they have no need of relatives who are not strong enough to look after themselves so right off the bat here we can see we're not very strong you know, Italy's pretty big they hold quite a few provinces uh, as you can see the difference with the lines here though they're pretty big compared to us we're we're one province they are many and so we need to really look at someone more up our alley however that doesn't mean they won't trade with us However, if I want to trade with Germany, I do have to actually break off relations with York here. Now, I don't want to do that, as York is actually my neighbor right across the ocean. Now, I am right here. York is right there. They are bigger than me. I really don't want to make them mad right now. Uh, as you can see, Wales and Wessex are both at war with York here. Looks like they might have a hard time getting off <laughs> and starting this time. So let's look at Byzantania. Will they trade with me? Only if I marry away my princess. I'm going to have to say no to that. I want to keep my family in my family. So let's see if I can trade with the Fatimids here. Another big empire. And another marriage offer. I'm going to, again, I don't want to trade away my 
princess just yet. Remember, these are medieval times, and women were used as bartering tools back then. Kiev will gladly trade with me, and so now I have put both my king and my prince as potential merchants. I cannot and wait so I want to, to hear my your king orders. To trade with Kiev. And now Kiev's trade is giving me 10 gold income here in my gold your gold, Zach. So my total income is 19, my expenditure is going to be 10. Now, taxes make people upset. You don't like paying taxes, right? And so, I always want to go with no taxes here. And as you can see here, my tax income is no anyways, so it doesn't matter. I'm just making my people happier and not changing my income at all. Now, because I'm at war, I can incite a war tax and get 300 gold. But it will result in happiness decreasing and a drop in kingdom power. More on kingdom power later here. Now I can trade with York if I so choose to. However, I want to try with Sweden. Again, they want to manage. I'm just going to go I ahead and say, let's go ahead and trade with York. Get some of it. So, here we are back in this view like we were before and we see our city of Ulster now go down here and this is where you can build a town improvements I already have some things in place a town watch house for guards a moat self-explanatory training grounds right here so I can train units for military purposes and a tax collector's office which gives me extra gold but minus three unhappiness now again I'm one of those people that really likes to make my people happy. So let's look at the happiness here. Town development, they really put up all that tax collector's office. Minus three on to happiness right there. And the more unhappy your people are, the more likely they are to rebel. Now no taxes, no taxes means plus five to happiness. So right now, I have a negative two percent chance of rebellion. My people are content. However, I don't like any of these little tax collector office things, so I could go ahead and remove those when I can. Now, you see this just popped up right here. It's a mercenary camp. 